Hey everyone, good morning. I'm at Lyndon B. Johnson Elementary School on the city's west side for Science with Sarah. We're going to make spooky magnetic ghosts with these awesome first graders. And we say, Hi. good morning, Hi. San Antonio! Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Got to be honest, very hard to top that. Good morning, it's a Wednesday, <laughs> October 26th. Yeah, good luck. We're excited about their enthusiasm, and we are excited about the beautiful weather. You and I just stepped outside before the newscast. Yes. There's still a chill in the air. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely beautiful out there, Justin. 40s this morning. There were mm -hmm. 30s in the whole country, and now we're starting to warm up. It's going to be one of those afternoons that... We just love, you know, it's, uh, it's this time of year where we get these beautiful, beautiful days. As we look at the weather headlines, things do change, though. And we've got sort of rapid fire when it comes to these storm systems that will be headed our way next couple days. So let's look at the weather headlines here. We start off with the blue skies this morning. And we'll get some great weather today. More clouds coming up tomorrow, more humidity. So we'll start to see those changes probably late in the day on Thursday. Then we go into Thursday night, Friday morning, and that's when we watch for our next storm system. Front comes through, maybe some strong storms. There will be some pockets of heavy rain, but we're not looking for big totals as we get into Friday morning. But keep in mind, this could affect the Friday morning commute. That's the way things are timing out. Right now, 55, mostly sunny. Dew point is at 40 with calm winds. And looking at temperatures at this hour, 51 Canyon Lake, 42 Boulevardy, 55 Port SA, 57 Stinson, 50 down there at Pleasanton. So there are still some 40s on the map. This changes rapidly. We get close to 80 later this afternoon. Very quickly, pollen count. It is in. Molds are low at 480. That's all we have. We're going to talk more about our rain chance and how things evolve coming up tomorrow here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Quick look out the roads with TransGuide. A little bit of a slowdown here at Highway 281 and Loop 410. Uh, real problems over at Loop 410 and McCullough. Uh, looks like this will be the eastbound lane, so watch out there. And also, you might want to watch out around Highway 90 at Loop 410. This are, that would be the westbound area. Okay, a warning for people on the south side. There will be bomb squad training today at the San Antonio Police Department Training Academy at 410 near Morrison Boulevard. You may hear loud explosions from now through 2 p.m. today. So the department is putting out the word now in the hopes the public will not be alarmed. Top stories we're following today. A man facing a possible charge of intoxication manslaughter. This after a passenger in his car died after crashing overnight. It happened on the west side near the intersection of West Commerce and 36th Street. According to police, the driver was detained after wrapping his car around a utility pole. The passenger in the car was trapped inside. He was taken to the hospital but later died. And San Antonio police are investigating a shooting on the east side that happened late last night. A police say a teenage girl was inside her home when someone drove by and started shooting. This happened in a neighborhood off north, uh, northwest of Rigsby and Loop 410. The teen was shot in the ankle and is expected to be okay. So far, no word on any arrests or suspects in this case. Children's health and different viruses going around. It's been a big story lately, particularly this week. And now a drug, drug commonly used to treat bacterial infections in children is in short supply. Three of the top four makers of the antibiotic amoxicillin are reporting supply limitations here in the U.S. Amoxicillin is described for many illnesses, including ear and throat infections, and it comes in several forms. So children generally take the liquid form of the drug, which is reportedly working with pharmaceutical companies to fix the problem. Concerns continue to grow over what doctors are seeing in hospitals here in San Antonio and across the country. The triple threat of COVID, the flu and RSV all hitting at once. CNN's Brian Todd has advice from healthcare workers and what parents can do to protect their kids. A baby with trouble breathing. It's why this mom in Columbus, Ohio, took her two-month-old to the hospital. He just declined super rapidly. Doctors across the country are warning of a triple threat, the big three of viruses, one doctor calls them. Certainly we know all about uh, COVID. We certainly know about influenza, but RSV, again, is known by every pediatrician because it fills up our hospitals every year. RSV, or respiratory syncytial virus, a common respiratory illness that is occasionally severe in babies and young children. Experts say
If you look in the southern United States, we're already starting to see flu cases um, take a really big their turn. The number of RSV cases in the U.S. detected by PCR tests in the second week of October was higher than any other week in the past two years, according to the CDC. And across the country, about three quarters of pediatric hospital beds are currently in use, a larger share than at any time over the past two years. And after falling for months, COVID cases have recently flattened out in the U.S. I'll be honest, I think we're in for a tough several months. We're seeing high numbers of children who are getting sick, who are actually needing support to breathe, and we've seen earlier than expected seasons. RSV and the flu have similar symptoms, experts say. Runny nose, decrease in appetite, coughing, sneezing, wheezing, fever, so it's not always easy to tell which illness your child has. And it can be challenging to know if you should bring them to a hospital. Maybe they have a sniffle, a cough, congestion, but they're doing okay in the home. Or is your child really struggling or working to breathe such that they need to come see us in the hospital and in the emergency department? What about infants and newborns who can't tell their parents how they feel? What should those parents look for? Babies should not be refusing their bottle, and that's often one of the first signs we see that RSV is getting out of control in these infants as they start to refuse their bottle. You start to have trouble waking them up. The doctors we spoke to have this advice for the parents of young children on preventive measures against the flu, RSV, and COVID. Wash your hands often. Everyone should cover their mouths when they cough or sneeze. Wear masks if you have symptoms. And even though there is no vaccine for RSV, there are vaccines for the flu and COVID. You can get those for children as young as six months old, and now is an important time to get them. Brian Todd, CNN, Washington. The CDC says when it comes to RSV, parents should be especially cautious if their children are preemies, newborns have a weakened immune system, or are under the age of two with lung and heart conditions. And your other morning headlines, chilling new details emerging about the person that police say opened fire on a high school in St. Louis, Missouri. Plus Coca-Cola thinking outside the can to help shoppers. And the numbers for the eighth largest Powerball jackpot will be drawn tonight. RJ Marcus joins us in the newsroom or here with more of the stories. He's actually right here. I'm here, studio. yes. I'm in the studio. Uh, back here. You're <laughs> there. Right. <laughs> I'm here and I already have big dreams uh, when, you know, we win this lottery here. Uh -huh. So I may not be at work tomorrow. Just uh -oh. I love this place. But, okay. you, but you'll remember your old friends. <laughs> of, course. of course. Yeah, never forget, never forget. So we'll hey, talk RJ, about we that love just you, a bit. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Wink. Thank you, Mark. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, but uh, obviously, you're starting with some uh, serious and uh, tragic updates here to this shooting there in St. Louis. Police are releasing more details about the gunman who opened fire at a high school Monday, killing two people and injuring several others. Investigators say the suspect had an AR-15 style weapon and was carrying more than 600 rounds of ammunition. Now, police say that the shooter also had seven magazines strapped to his chest with an extra eight magazines in a bag. Investigators also found a handwritten note in the suspect's car. Officials shared part of that note during a press conference. I don't have any friends. I don't have any family. I've never had a girlfriend. I've never had a social life. I've been an isolated loner my entire life. This was the perfect storm for a mass shooter. The shooter was in the hallway and fired uh, a shot at myself. And you're right there hearing from one of the people who was right there in front of the shooter. So the two people who were killed were a 61-year-old health teacher and a 15-year-old student who would have turned 16 next month. So authorities say the shooter recently graduated from the school but did not have any prior criminal history. And it's still unclear how he was able to get inside the building. Police say all the doors were locked at the time. Moving on to some consumer news. So we all know that prices are rising and a recession could now be looming. And polls show that's the biggest concern for voters, but that's not really the case for many bankers. A new report indicates consumer confidence is the lowest it's been since July, and the conference board says inflation is the main reason. Higher prices are forcing some people to cut down on their spending, and, in a, and if enough Americans do that, financial experts say the whole economy could slow down. Plenty of people who run the nation's financial sector think that as well. Well, but some top bankers and invest investors say they're more worried about geopolitics and international war. Something to keep an eye on there. Also keeping an eye on grocery prices. We know that those continue to rise. And now you might notice that Coke products are looking a little bit different on store shelves. Coca-Cola has plans to add more varieties of cans, bottles, and value packs 
next year. So the company has already been selling smaller containers and multi-packs with fewer cans. And even though customers may end up paying more per liter, when they buy those smaller containers or packages, some are willing to make that trade in order to get a lower price at the moment. I've kind of caught myself doing that a few times. So the company also brought up the idea of returnable containers as a way to lower costs. So this is where customers would get some money back when they return bottles or cans. All right, so here's a potential solution to all of these higher costs, inflation. Just win the lottery, right? It is that easy. Probably not. But numbers will be drawn tonight for an estimated $700 million Powerball grand prize. So no one has matched all six numbers and won the Powerball's top prize since early August, meaning that tonight's jackpot has grown for nearly three months. The $700 million jackpot is for those who get it paid out annually over 29 years. But winners basically always go straight for the cash, which would be an estimated $335 million before taxes. And guys, the odds of hitting the uh, numbers, all six numbers here, are 1 in 292.2 million. So as wow. Jim Carrey said once in Dumb and Dumber, so you're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that> like, <laughs> very tiny. <laughs> yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Like, so we'll see everybody. what happens. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, I, a lot of times they kind of split these. Sure. So, yeah, yeah. We'll, see, we'll see if anyone has lady luck on their side. We go to bed early because of our ship, but mm -hmm. have us on uh, speed dial if you I will, yes. definitely. Around 10 we'll be the first one to know. <laughs> Thank you very we'll much, wake up RJ. for that. Absolutely. <laughs> we will. Thank you, Thanks, RJ. Guys. 909, 55 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. Muertos Fest is this weekend, and it's a fun way to honor those who have passed before us. Tiffany Huertas is going to show us how one local team teacher is going to be honored by those who knew her best. Plus, good morning, I'm Max Massey. When you think of San Antonio Startup Week, you might think of tech companies, coding, things of that nature. But there have been so many businesses that have been thriving because of San Antonio Startup Week. And we're going to explain one of them to you. We're going to introduce the one of them to you right after the break. And Sarah is out at Linda B. Johnson Elementary School with David Sears. It's Wednesday, that means it's time for Science with Sarah. We'll be back. Welcome back to 913. San Antonio Startup Week was last week and it's brought amazing opportunities to hopeful entrepreneurs in our area to learn experience, take steps towards success. There has been a lot of successful companies to come out of Startup Week and Max Massey joins us live with one of them. Good morning, Max. Good morning, guys. We're here at Geekdom, and yes, we're here. We're talking about Mellow B. Let's see if we can get a little brand recognition right there. All right, so we're joined here with the founder and CEO, Julia. So, Julia, tell us about Mellow B, how you got started, what it is. Well, Mellow B is a meditation cushion. Started out as a meditation cushion. Now I just call it a posture cushion because we have them for the, the chair and the floor. So um, I had sciatic nerve pain whenever I meditated on my cushion, and so I decided to make a better one. My daughter was really ill for a while, and she needed help with her posture. So I kind of put those two issues together and, um, yeah, made a, made a better cushion for us to sit on. It's supportive and comfortable. And when a lot of people think of San Antonio Startup Week, they think of tech companies, they think of Internet companies, coding, things of that nature. But you got started really from San Antonio Startup Week. What is your advice for any entrepreneurs in and around our area? Well, if you have a problem, you know, you can figure out a solution, and then Geekdom is a great place to come and just uh, check that out. There's a great group of people here who can uh, move you on your way. Obviously, this is mindful meditation, very important. We talk about mental health. It's been at the forefront of so many people's minds over the last couple of years through the pandemic. You, know, you actually host meditation sessions here. Why is it so important for you? Why is it so important for people here at Geekdom? Well, mindfulness really is a way of life. Uh, we, we often live our lives in the past or in the future, when actually the only time you can live your life is right here at this moment. So the only time you can like smell anything or taste anything or feel anything is right here. And so we should live our lives in this moment, and um, that's really what mindfulness does. Meditation is just the practice of, of doing that, just being here with all your experiences and all your senses. All right, Julia, thank you so much. I got to say, guys, I feel great sitting here. I don't, I don't think I've sat you know, crisscross applesauce in a long time. But this is great. So, Julia, for anyone who's interested in, in getting the, the Mellow B cushions, where can they find them? Well, we're online right now. So uh, go to mellowb.co, um, and you can check us out on Instagram at mellowbco. Right. Julia, thank you so much. If you guys have any questions, we have all the answers, ksat.com, and, of course, the noon at news. There's news at noon. Guys, back to you. Max, could you do Shark Tank one day? Is, is that what I'm thinking <laughs> here? <laughs> It'll be game. <laughs> 
I'd be too nice for Shark Tank. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. I, yes, you would. You yeah. would. Thank you, Max. All right, be careful with the leg out there, crisscross oh, applesauce. Yes, definitely. All right, thank you, Max. <laughs> 916. Let's look outside with live cam. Yeah, we stepped out there earlier. It's still a little chilly at 56 degrees. We kind of wanted to stay outside. I mean, you had a jacket on. but Well, I did. I was cheating. But yeah. uh, we were soaking it up this morning. It's yeah. totally worth it to be outside right yeah. now. It's it's another one of those days. Uh, we had, you know, one uh, last week, this week. We get these highs in the 70s. These clear skies, just the way you like it. We do have some more rain in the forecast, though, so we got to watch that for Thursday night, Friday morning. Speaking of rainfall, it has been so long since we've gotten any sort of really good rainfall at the airport. I mean, we keep showing the stat, but it continually blows my mind. It has been 378 days since we've had two inches or more at San Antonio International. That was back on October 13th, 2021. Since uh, it's been 63 days since we've had an inch or more at the airport. That was back on August 24th. And then nine days ago, we did get about six tenths of an inch. Last rainfall didn't do much for us. There were a few spots that got some good numbers, but not at the airport. So it has been a really, really dry stretch. We'll have another opportunity, as I said, for some rain coming up Friday morning. Lows this morning down into the 30s, Fredericksburg and Kerrville, 47 here in San Antonio, 46 in New Braunfels, 44 in Hondo and Gonzales. In around Bear County, mid 40s for the most part. It, it definitely was jacket weather this morning, uh, but by this afternoon, we'll see that rapid rise in temperatures, very indicative of the dry air that we have in place. So by late today, we're topping out at 79. That is a 32 degree swing. That's what dry air will do for you. And as we look at the forecast highs around the area, some places will get into the 80s. Hondo, Pearsall, Divine, down to Pleasanton, and then upper 70s. For places in the hill country, Canyon Lake, Bernie, you'll be at 75 this afternoon with those blue skies. And as we look outside for you, yeah, it is nice. 55 degrees, calm winds, dew point is at 40. And a lot of places are still in the 40s in the hill country, so it's going to take a little while longer to get these numbers up into the 50s and 60s, but it will happen. 43 Fredericksburg, 42 Carville, 41 Junction. And as we speak, these numbers are jumping up. 61 Carissa Springs, 51 right now in Gonzales in around Bear County, still in the mid 50s at this hour. But I think by next hour, you will see 60s on the map. So where is our next storm system? Right now, we can see it on water vapor, still up here around parts of Oregon and Idaho. This thing dips south, dips into Texas, and does move a little bit further south than our last storm system. And that's why I'm hopeful that maybe rainfall will be a little bit better. Not a whole lot better, but at least a little bit. And you can see there is nothing around Texas right now, but we do detect some snow across parts of Colorado. That is sort of the beginnings of this storm system. So let's look at the future cast and time it out for you. By the time we get into tomorrow morning, we're starting to see a little more humidity come in. We may get some clouds developing along the Rio Grande, but generally pretty quiet here in San Antonio. It's not until the afternoon that clouds really start to increase. and We go probably partly to mostly cloudy by tomorrow evening. Then by, say, 3 a.m., we'll start to see some storms developing along the front. Out west, we may see a few showers here. Nothing very heavy happens. We get a line of showers and storms. And again, I think this one extends a little bit further south, a little bit further west. So that's good for some of our western counties that missed out. And this is when we could see some of those more robust storms. We'll have to watch the morning commute on Friday. By 10 a.m., a lot of this is starting to scoot east very quickly. So our eastern counties get some of the storms. And then by midday and into the afternoon, we're looking at windy conditions and it clears out. So rain chances Thursday and Friday, they really peak between 6 and 8 a.m. Friday morning. So that's kind of the time frame that uh, we'll be watching as uh, this activity comes through. And how much rain? Quarter of an inch to a half an inch, again, not great, but maybe a little bit better than what we were looking at with this last storm system. So we'll go 80 tomorrow and then 76 behind the front with clearing skies on Friday, Friday afternoon at least. 73 Saturday and windy. We'll have to watch for some clouds on Saturday. Sunday looks amazing and Halloween at this point looks pretty good. We do have some more rain chances maybe creeping back in Tuesday into Wednesday. At least it's waiting until Tuesday after trick or treating. Yes, we'll take it. Good candy, parental candy eating forecast yes. overall. I agree with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Those leftovers are Getting all ready ours, it. just so we're clear. 920, <laughs> about 56 degrees. It's time for high school volleyball playoffs. Andrew Seeley was at some key matchups last night as the regular season wrapped up. We're going to have those highlights in the next half hour.
And also back for science with Sarah on this Wednesday morning. Sarah out at uh, LBJ Elementary with David Sears. That's coming up next. Welcome back. It's 924. Science with Sarah is on the road. And this morning, Sarah Spivey and David Sears are out at Lyndon B. Johnson Elementary. They're visiting with a first grade class over there and have a special Halloween experiment planned. Good morning, guys. <laughs> Hey, good, good morning. morning. Good morning. Ooh, that was kind of spooky. Well, well, good morning. Well, 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 uh, <laughs> well, today we're working with magnets and we're making ghosts that float. It's pretty awesome. There's a few things you need. You need jumbo popsicle sticks. You need ceramic magnets. You need electrical tape. You need fishing wire and paper clips as well as tissue paper, really light tissue paper. So the first thing we're gonna do, David, is we're gonna make a magnetic wand. Okay, okay so you need two popsicle sticks and then you need three magnets together. Popsicle sticks without the popsicle. Right. What's Jump. wrong with that? Craft sticks, I don't know. Okay, so Leave you're gonna... <laughs> Okay, here we David, go. you're going to tape these two together okay. like I've done with a big, long piece of electrical Look tape. Right. Look, you've already done this a couple of times, no. haven't you? I've tried. All right, here we go, David. You're doing great. Put those together. There. Perfect. Whoa. Tape them together. That's your magnet wand. Magnet, magnet wand, wand party. Magnet All right. Wand party. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take a piece of clear fishing wire. We've done this in advance. You're going to make a loop and you're going to tape it down onto the table with electrical tape. Then you're going to take the okay. safety, no, it's a paper clip. Paper I clip. almost called a safety <laughs> pin. And you're going to attach it on, it on there and see if oh, your magnetic wand works. You missed? Well, I missed. You got it? Well, you know. There you go, David. You got it. It's so... Detailed there you go, man. All right. There you go. And we're going to test it out here. Look at there. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, picked them, oh all picked them all up. Wow. Okay, look okay. at that. So then. Okay, so then what you're going to do is you're going to take a piece of tissue paper. Okay. Now, what we do is we make it look like a little ghost. So you just stick your thumb right there, like that. And now it kind of looks like a little ghost. You see that? Great. Okay. Mm, so, scary. so now take. Your paper clip, okay. put it underneath the okay. ghost. Oh, underneath the ghost. Yep, and then use your magnetic wand. Okay, now try to make it float. There you go. There you go. <laughs> it's floating, it worked. Let me try. It worked. There you go, Dave. You got a ghost. Yeah, you can also do it like this. I'll show you where you can get it, and you can actually make it float by itself if you Let do it, it just right. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Pretty cool. So these awesome kids here at Linda B. Johnson Elementary School, these first graders, they've already got their tissue paper. You guys got your magnetic wands. Yeah. Are you guys ready to make some ghosts? Yeah. All right, we'll do that after the break. Welcome back. We're at Lyndon B. Johnson Elementary School on the city's west side. We have these awesome first graders here. Guys, show us your ghost. Ooh. Show us what you've made. Cool. Okay, now we're going to try to make some of these floats. So take your magic wand, your magic magnetic wand, and your paper clip like that. That's good. Your paper clip's down here. Okay, we're going to get it on the wire. And we're gonna try this. Let's see. <gasps> Whoa! <laughs> what do you think? Ooh. Pretty cool. I've always wanted to be. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Let's check out David. David, how's it going over there? Great. Look at we got close, float. Okay. Good job, like that. Yeah, we're gonna do something special on this one. Oh, we're gonna make a smiley face on this make one. A, a ghosty smiley face. Ready? That was a ghost smile. How about that? Does that look like a, go a happy ghost? We've got a happy ghost going. You want a happy ghost? All right, here we go. We're making happy ghosts. Okay, we're we'll making a ghost thing. There you go. All right, now float it. Put it on your, put it on your magnet. Oh, what do you think? 
Yeah, I can help you. So when you're doing this with your students, something to keep in mind is that depending on how many magnets you have in your wand, that's how strong this is going to be. Just real gentle. Pull up real. Ah, see, you had it. That was it. It was floating. Yeah, you try it. Okay, we're going to put this underneath there. Now let it go. Here, okay, use my magic wand. This is a great example of magnetism, and your students may have a difficulty finding the paper clip under here. What do you want? And all they have to do is make them attached, just like that. Whoa, got a floaty ghost. Good job. Got a floaty ghost. So here's the thing. May I have my magic wand back? Thank you. Here's the thing. If you're having a very difficult time with the fishing wire, guys, what I want you to do is I want you just to put your paper clip down on the table here, put this guy over here, and just make it float like this. Watch, you ready? All right, hands up, hands up. Whoa! What do you think about that? It's so cool. <laughs> Awesome, guys. Alrighty, first graders. I want you to listen to me. Let's make our spookiest ghost noise we ever can. Are you ready? Yeah. On the count of three. One, two, three. Ooh, and look at your ghost floating. So this is awesome. David, you're a great assistant. Thank you for that. You're awesome. And if you want to do this at home with your students, there's going to be a, a complete example of how to do this with materials, even some helpful links to get the materials at home. First graders, thank you so much for being spookily good at science today. All righty, we'll go back to you guys. This is Science with Sarah on the West Side. Thanks, y'all. Oh, thank you. What an awesome group of first graders you had there this morning. Yeah, thank you, guys. <laughs> Appreciate it. In her list of uh, materials, she has clear fishing wire. Any clear fishing line, line. would yes. do. Yeah, you can get that at Walmart Academy, wherever. Awesome nice. project. Taking a look out there with live cam. Nice and cool. We're excited about that. We're also excited about rain chances this week. Yes, and the kids are excited about Halloween, clearly. Coming up, a uh, great group of kids there. Love that project. Uh, yeah, Halloween's looking good, but before we get there, we've got to get through some rain chances that are going to show up late tomorrow night into Friday morning. And this is a time frame in which we've raised rain chances. So you look at the, the numbers here. Thursday's probably quiet, but Thursday night and Friday morning, we have rain chances all the way up to 60%. Now look, we're not going to get a ton of rain out of this, but it is another opportunity to at least get something. Today, beautiful, 79 degrees, sunny skies, northeasterly winds will become southeasterly, 5 to 10 miles per hour. And uh, I want to show you a picture, guys. I mean, come on. Aww. Come on. <laughs> so How cute. How cute is that? Uh, this is Caliban? Caliban. Caliban. Yeah, Caliban. Caliban. Okay. Aww. And that is Dumbo. I mean, that's just adorable. Amazing. Uh, well done. You can dress up your pet and send in the pictures at KSAT Connect, and you know it will show. Uh, we love that. Thank you so much. KSAT 12 hour forecast, noontime, 70 degrees. We'll see sunny skies throughout the afternoon, 79 by 4 p.m., 79 at 5 p.m. That's probably where we top out this evening. Temperatures will fall off pretty quickly, like yesterday, but not as cold tomorrow morning. We're down to 66 by 9 p.m. I want to get you updated on a couple of incidents here. Even the morning commute is over. We've got uh, two accidents in the same area. You're looking now at an accident 410 westbound in McCullough. We are already tracking one on the other side, but right now it looks like that exit ramp, exit ramp uh, near McCullough or San Pedro is completely closed off. We are seeing big backups on the frontage road again. This is westbound 410 just underneath the ramps here at 281. We had an accident on the other side. Also getting a report of two accidents on Loop 410 over at Highway 90. Well, moving on this morning, it's a big story we've been covering since the shooting occurred at the beginning of the month here in San Antonio. The shooting of 17-year-old Eric Cantu by a San Antonio police officer who has now been fired. 
His family is speaking out for the first time since everything happened, and they say Eric's road to recovery has been a lot of back and forth. Eric remains in ICU. Our John Paul Brajas got to talk with his parents who say they are not only praying for their son, but for the former officer who was charged in the shooting. Because he's a father too. So 10 minutes of the prayer that we were having to lift Eric up was also to lift him up. But he needs to pay for what he did because you don't shoot at something 10 times unless you're trying to kill it. Strong words from Eric Andu's family for James Brennan. Body cam video shows the former San Antonio police officer shoot 17-year-old Eric Cantu on October 2nd. Get out of the car. Cantu's wow. parents tell us at least four bullets hit their son and ricochet through his body. A single bullet remains near Eric's heart. His father says the mental trauma is just as bad as the physical. Sleeping, what we think is a peaceful sleep, to hallucinations and raising his hands and trying to press the pedals to the car and pushing gun symbols. These are the things we have to see daily that no one has seen. The Gantus explain Eric has woken up. He's also overcome fevers, pneumonia, and can whisper thanks to a trach tube. They add Eric's car was not stolen like the officer believed and that their son ran out of fear. Matter of fact, he wanted to be a police officer. We have multiple years of pictures of him in his Halloween costume being a police officer <laughs> and running around that thing for yeah. days on end. He's vibrant, yes, determined, yeah. strong, smart. He's funny. funny. The family called Eric a survivor and they believe he'll make it through this. Their attorney adds they want justice not just in the criminal but also in the civil and legislative sense. Because don't all our children go to McDonald's? Don't all our children sit and eat a cheeseburger? And if we don't get justice for Eric can too, then next time, it could be you. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Now the family's attorney, Ben Crump, who you saw there at the end, did not go into specifics, but their lawyers will explore every legal avenue for the family. As for the Cantus, they say it's not right that Eric is at University Hospital in a bed and Brendan is out on streets, on the streets, out on bond. We're going to continue to bring you the latest on this story. 939, 58 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. A former teacher and local artist is being honored at Muertos Fest this weekend after she passed away last year. Tiffany Huerta shows us how her family is remembering her and what pieces will be incorporated in her altar. And welcome back. It's 943. We are just days away from the 10th annual Dia de los Muertos Festival at Hemisphere, and everyone is putting the final touches on their altars for their loved ones. Tiffany Huerta shows us how the community is coming together to build an altar for local artists who had a passion for teaching. She was a school teacher at Edison, but she was also a huge part of the local theater community. The family and friends of Maria Ibarra yeah. are coming together to celebrate her life. One of her most important legacies, I guess, is her legacy as an educator. Um, she really, really um, dedicated her life and career to students. An altar is being built in honor of Maria, who died last year. She was always into theater, her first play was in high school where she either didn't speak at all or only had one line. But after that, she fell in love with it. Special items fill the altar that will be showcased at this year's Muertos Fest at Hemisphere. So it's going to be like a mini open mic through the whole Muertos Fest. Anyone who wants to could get up, they could share a song, a story, tell a joke. Loved ones say Maria was outgoing, understanding, and would light up a room. I know that anyone who, you know, like my mom loved was really lucky because she just was able to give love in this really like radical way. It means a lot just to remember her, keep honoring her. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. And again, Muertos Fest will be this weekend at Hemisphere, and this is a free event. There will be live music, art vendors, special events for the kids and families. Plus, there will be around 80 altars created to honor those who have passed away. If you can't make it out, you can catch our primetime special, which will air Sunday at 8 p.m. right here on KSAT, KSAT.com, and the KSAT Plus app. Scan this QR code on your screen for all this information and much more. And again, we want to emphasize this is free. Don't let anybody try to sell you tickets <laughs> to this event. Exactly. And this year, I believe the weather's going to work out a little better. I remember last year, it was a little humid out there. Yeah, 
I, the, the, the temperatures will be nice. I will warn you on Saturday it will be a little bit windy, so make sure you know okay. everything's you know oh, secured. Oh yeah, that's true um, with all but, the altars out there. Yeah, we yeah. could see some gusts maybe around 20 miles per hour, so 20-25. Not as bad as its last go around in the less wind on Sunday. So all in all, weekend looks pretty good. We're focusing, though, on Thursday night, Friday morning when we could see some storms move right across the area. And we'll start off first with temperatures and show you that uh, pretty nice range of temperatures across the state. 69 in Brownsville. Compare that to 42 in Amarillo. Typical cool spot, right? Uh, it was pretty chilly there this morning. And there's actually quite a bit of cold air up across places like Wyoming and Montana, where it's 21 right now, Cut Bank 27 in Casper. We're starting to see these fronts pull down some cooler air. It's getting to that time of year. And so as we head into the weekend behind our next system, we will see some cooler temperatures, not cold, but cooler. And as we go outside for you, blue skies, and uh, we're sitting at 55 degrees at the airport, 57 Stinson, 55 at Kelly. I expect these numbers will jump into the 60s by next hour. But still seeing some 40s in places like Kerrville and Junction, 58, Uvalde, 63, Carrizo Springs, 58 right now in Gonzales and around Bear County, as we said, mid 50s, Randolph and Holotus, the two cool spots there, 51 still at this hour. 66 we think by 11 o'clock noontime we're already up around 70 so that's that rapid warm up close to 80 by 4 p.m. and 5 p.m. sunny skies all day long and our winds will switch around to the southeast anywhere from 5 to 10 by late this afternoon and this evening. Dew points. We know it's dry out there. It feels very dry but by tomorrow we'll see a very rapid increase in humidity and by I'd say Thursday evening we'll start to get into that muggy territory and that sets the stage for our next storm system. So we're see a lot of moisture getting pulled up out ahead of it and uh, then dew points jump off again behind the front. It'll be a dry day Friday, Saturday, Sunday before dew points increase again next week with another chance for rain. As we look across the country, that last storm system that brought us storms now moving across the Great Lakes, bringing rain there. There's a little bit of snow in places uh, like Colorado, higher elevations. That is our next storm system. It uh, makes it into Texas again by tomorrow. So here's what the future cast shows. By Thursday morning, tomorrow morning, we've got some clouds developing in spots, probably still clear here in San Antonio, but clouds do increase by the afternoon. This is six o'clock. Uh, mostly cloudy. We're not expecting really any rain tomorrow, but as we get into early, early Friday morning, this is 3 a.m., we'll start to see some showers. It will notice some storms developing out west along the front. Then it really ramps up by 7 a.m. Friday morning. So we've got to think about the commute Friday morning. There will be some storms around, I think, and this could cause some issues. Something to plan for. And then the front sweeps through. The storms are in our eastern counties by 10 a.m. And then by midday, it is cleared out. It is windy. So it's another small window to get some storms. And there is a risk for some stronger storms. Thursday night out west. And then Friday morning across some of our eastern counties. But, you know, San Antonio is not included in this. We may be at some point. I, I think there is a risk for a couple of strong storms uh, in between these periods. Uh, basically, early Friday morning, as I showed you around 7 a.m., I think that's when we could see some gusty winds. I can't rule out a little bit of hail with some of these storms, too. And as far as rainfall goes, quarter of an inch to half an inch, that's probably going to be the average. These are not going to be big numbers. I think we get a little bit more than what we saw a couple days ago, but uh, not uh, not big numbers. And as we look down the line, 80 degrees Thursday, 76 Friday. That's behind the front. And we mentioned Saturday. Clouds around. 78 Sunday, 80 for Halloween right now. Trick or treat looks trick or treat looks dry, a little warm. We may add in some rain chances there on Tuesday. You can survive 80 though. Yeah, it's That's not good. bad. It, we've we've had warmer Halloweens yes, in the past. And I know some people are already shivering when they see our morning temperatures, especially like today. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they already miss summer. Yep. Hey, don't forget, early voting is happening right now here in Texas. We have a full list of polling locations in the San Antonio area on KSAT.com. So far, nearly 64,000 people have already voted. If you head to our website and click on the Vote 2022 section under the News tab, you will have a lot of resources for you before you cast your vote. Polls are open from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. this week through Friday, and hours vary on the weekend. They're also extended a little longer next week. Early voting ends next Friday, November 4th, and Election Day is November 8th. I did my homework this morning. I'm voting today. Okay, a good weather day to do that as well. Yes, ma'am. Six, uh, rather 9.50, a whole different hour, much later. <laughs> 
950 <laughs> and 59 degrees. When we come back, a look at sports, including highlights from last night's high school volleyball matchups. After finishing with the best record in the United Soccer League regular season, San Antonio FC got a bye in the first round of the playoffs. Now they're getting ready to host Oakland Roots SC in the Western Conference semifinals this Friday night at Toyota Field here in San Antonio. Kickoff is at 7.30 p.m. The UIL High School Volleyball regular season wrapped up last night and playoff positioning was on the line in several key matchups, including a District 28 6A showdown between Brandeis and Reagan that went five sets. Andrew Seeley was at Northside Sports Gym last night and has the highlights. Volleyball is certainly a game of momentum. After Brandeis had rallied from a 2-0 set deficit to force a fifth and decisive set, Reagan returned the favor by stunning the Broncos and winning the fifth set 15-0. They take the match three sets to two and earn the second seed in District 28 6A. That was surreal. Like, it was crazy. Just a perfect set with no mistakes. Like, our serving was really tough. We just got them out of system really well. And um, we just took advantage of that. And we just. Especially for playoffs. Um, it really showed us what we can do. The win wasn't just special for playoff positioning. Senior libero Brenna Heffron notched her 1,000th career dig and got a chance to celebrate with her team after the match. It's just been a personal goal of mine this whole season, and it just feels great to finally accomplish it this season. And being a senior, it's great. Elsewhere in 28-6A, Johnson defeated Madison in a win-or-go-home game three sets to one. Thanks to a season sweep of the Mavericks, the Jaguars secured the fourth and final playoff berth. And in District 27-5A, MacArthur defeated Highlands three sets to one in their regular season finale. The victory means the Bramas will be the second seed with a 14-2 district record, and the Owls will enter the playoffs as the third seed. You can catch more highlights from all these matches right now on the BGC page at KSAT.com. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Andrew Seeley. Uh, San Antonio Spurs looking to make it four in a row tonight as they face the Minnesota Timberwolves again. Tip off set for 7 o'clock up in the Twin Cities. We'll have highlights coming up on the night beat at 10. We're going in. I'm so freaked out right now. Our tunnel is the star. And our Halloween spooky series continues tomorrow with a drive through a haunted car wash. Tune in tomorrow on GMSA at 9 to see the full story. We'll complete Halloween coverage here on KSAT 12. Yes, <laughs> we're on top of it this year. <laughs> we pre-planned all of this just for you. Yeah, that looked kind of scary with a little creature on the top. Tune in, though. <laughs> Have a good day.